Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is True Wonder Dog, and I'm here today with a comprehensive guide on the Belmonts. These characters were the winners of the poll on Twitter and on YouTube, so thanks so much for everyone who participated. Now let's go ahead and start the guide. So for starters, let's talk about these characters' strengths and weaknesses. So for their strengths, these characters are very good zoners and they have very good range on their attacks. The smash attacks have fantastic range and the tilts are pretty dang good too. Not to mention you can angle them in pretty much every direction you want, which makes them very very useful for keeping the opponent at bay. And then of course you have the items, which are honestly some of the best spacing tools in the entire game. They're very very useful, and very great for combos as well. Not to mention the Belmonts are also heavier than a vast majority of the cast, which means they're a lot harder for the opponent to kill. And it also means you can be a bit more riskier when you're playing. You can go for a few more trades because every single time you do trade, chances are the opponent's in a worse off state than you are. Although, since they are a heavy character, that does mean they're a bit slower than a vast majority of the cast as well. Not to mention their defense isn't that strong once the opponent gets close to you, they don't have very many good get off me tools. And then, worst of all, if knocked very far from the stage, their recovery options are very, very bad. Their up B doesn't really travel very far horizontally at all, and it's very predictable. Now thankfully you can use the whip attacks to tether onto the stage and try to get up that way, but since that's your only real option for getting back on stage, it makes you very, very predictable. And then on top of everything else, the Belmonts are also pretty easy to combo as well. But even so, I think these characters' strengths far outweigh their weaknesses, they're fantastic at zoning, they're great at edge guarding too, and despite their amazing range, they also hit very hard as well. So with that in mind, let's start talking about the tilts. Now tilts are very, very important for the Belmonts. In fact, I recommend, if you're not very good at doing tilts in this game, to map it to your right stick. That way it becomes much, much easier to do. Because the tilts are much faster than your smash attacks, I'll be them a little bit shorter range. So first up, we have the forward tilt. Pretty dang good range on it, very good horizontal range. It's great when the opponent's at your eye level and trying to get in. And keep in mind the game does give you more damage if you land it at max distance. So at max distance there, it was 14%. But if I land that a bit closer, it's only about 12%. So it's kind of nice how the game does reward you for spacing it out correctly. That's just a nice touch that I really do appreciate. And then we have the up tilt, which is more or less the same. Its range isn't quite as good, but its hitbox is a bit wider. So it's very good for hitting the opponent when they're above you, or like at a 45 degree angle above you. Just keep in mind it doesn't hit in front of him at all. The opponent does have to be in the air, however it is also good for extending combos too. So it definitely does have its uses. And then we have what is possibly the coolest looking tilt for this character, which is his down tilt. And since Simon does get lower to the ground, he actually can avoid certain attacks, including certain projectiles, so it's very good for getting in if you do want to close that gap and get some extra damage. And then best of all, it has a follow-up. So you can do down tilt, down tilt, and that's a true combo. It's very, very useful. And keep in mind that even if the first hit doesn't land, you can still cancel into the second one. So it's still a fantastic option, since it travels so far horizontally. And then last but not least, we have the dash attack. Now I find this dash attack to be very fascinating. Now it's a bit on the slow side, but it's very meaty to compensate. So for anyone who doesn't know, a meaty attack just means it's active for much longer. So the timing isn't quite as specific. I can do it very early, and I'll still have time to hit the opponent with it. I'll be active the entire time. I won't get as much damage for activating it that early, but the point is the hitbox is still active, so I can still catch the opponent if they whiff something. And that makes this dash attack very fascinating to me. Not to mention the damage, if you do land it early, is pretty dang good for a dash attack. 14, not bad. About the same as your tilt, so pretty dang good. And that's about it for the tilt, so next up let's talk about the smash attacks. Now for the most part, your smash attacks are basically beefier versions of your tilts. So for example, you have the forward smash and the back smash, which are a bit slower. They're considerably slower, but the range is much, much greater, and the damage is also much higher. And then if you charge these attacks even a little bit, you get a considerable boost in damage. So they're very, very good for baiting the opponent. Maybe you use an item, they try to jump over it, you hit them with the charge version of your smash attack, very good damage. And then also keep in mind you can angle the forward and back smash. So I can do forward and then angle it at an up angle, or you can angle it down if you so choose. And then there's the up smash, which does have considerable range compared to the up tilt. However, keep in mind its hitbox isn't nearly as wide. It basically only hits above your character. So it's still very useful, but just keep in mind it's not very good for catching the opponent if they're off to the side. You want to use the up smash when they're straight above you and you want to land that killing blow. That's what it's most useful for. And then there's the down smash, which hits on both sides of Simon, which can make it pretty useful if you're not sure where the opponent's going to end up. Maybe they're dodging around you and you're not quite sure where they're going to be. This is a good way to catch them if they're on either side of you. It's very, very good for that. And its damage is more than you'd think, too. 
pretty good damage. And that's about it for the smash attack, so next up let's talk about the air attacks. So first up, we have the neutral air. This attack is fairly fast, it's a good get off me tool in certain situations, and if you short hop, it can be a pretty good way to get some damage on the opponent. It can also be good for combo extension in certain situations. I actually like this neutral air a lot because it's great when combined with your short hop. Very good get off me tool and sometimes good for combos too. And then next up we have the forward air which is fantastic because you can actually angle it just like the forward smash. So I can do down a little bit to hit the opponent if they're on the ground, or if they're in the air, I can angle it upward as well. It's very, very useful. Both the forward air and back air are certainly very useful since you can angle them. If the opponent's on level with you, you can angle it downward. If the opponent's jumping above you, you can angle it upward. It's very, very useful. And then last but not least, we have the up air. Very similar to the up smash, it hits above you, though the range isn't quite as good, but it's much faster to compensate. So if the opponent's above you and you want a bit extra range to hit him a bit faster, you can do the up air instead of the up smash, since it is faster, and since you jump, the range is pretty much the same. And then last but not least, we have the down air. This attack doesn't have very good horizontal range, but it's very good for starting off combos or extending combos in certain situations. It can also spike the opponent, but it's very, very risky since the character does commit to the attack all the way down. So if you miss this thing, you basically just killed your own character. You committed seppuku, so be very, very careful when using it. I recommend doing it when you have the stage below you or for extending combos because that's honestly where it shines. And then to end things off, let's talk about the specials because the specials are honestly one of the best things about the Belmonts. In my honest opinion, it's why they're so good at zoning and forcing the opponent into a certain situation and then you can counter appropriately. So first up, let's talk about the Ford B which is the cross. This attack is very, very useful, covers a very large chunk of the screen, hits on the way out and on the way back, so it's fantastic for zoning, especially since you can move freely the entire time and do whatever you want to afterwards. So I can still throw my axe, I can still use my whip, I can do everything once I've thrown the axe. So honestly, if you ever had the chance to use this move, you should be using it. It's one of the best things about the Belmonts and it should be out every single chance you get. And the same can also be said for down B, which is the holy water. This attack is very, very active. It's a bit slower and does have a fixed distance, but man, this thing is just so great for juggling the opponent. Not to mention, it's also a defensive wall. So if you just want the opponent off you for a little bit, this can be a great way to force them to jump over it. And then best of all, it's a fantastic edge guarding tool. Once you throw this bad boy out, the opponent has to either wait for it to go away or find some way to maneuver around it, which means you can predict their movements and punish accordingly. And then next up, we have the neutral B, which is his axe attack. Now it's a bit slower on startup, and the angle might not be the easiest to get used to, but just look at that damage, 18%? That's pretty dang good, that's almost as good as your smash attack, and it's just your default B. Not to mention, its arc does make it very useful if the opponent's above you, since it covers a pretty good amount of vertical and horizontal distance. Its only downside is the startup, it's a bit on the slow side, but the damage and trajectory more than makes up for it in my opinion. It's just not the first thing you want to throw out typically. For the most part, you want to use something else to launch the opponent away, and then use the axe to cover some of their approach options. And then, last but not least, we have the up B. This attack does pretty decent damage, it's fairly solid, and it's fast too. So it can be a good attack out of shield. In certain situations, if the opponent's pressuring you, you just blocked. It can be a fairly good attack out of shield. And as mentioned earlier, it's a semi-decent recovery option if you're knocked away from the stage. It's not the best, but it does have some distance and it attacks on the way up, so maybe you don't want to use your whip every now and then to get back to stage, and if that's the case, up B can be a solid alternative. Though most of the time you are going to be using your whip to tether onto the stage, but just keep in mind that up B can be a solid mix-up option as well. And I almost forgot about the throws, let's go ahead and talk about those last. Now, once again, this character is a zoner. You typically don't want to get close to the opponent most of the time, so throws aren't going to be something you're using for a majority of your gameplay, but even so, it's still important to learn what these throws do and why you should use each one. So for starters, we have the forward throw. Nothing real special here. It's a good way for getting some distance between you and the opponent. You can use it to set up your cross and your axe, all that good stuff, and start getting back to your zoning. It can be good for that. Then next up, we have the back throw. More or less the exact same idea, just get the opponent away from you. It's very good for that, you can start setting up your stuff, set up your axe, set up your cross, your holy waters. Both the forward and back throw are basically for getting distance from the opponent. And then we have the down throw. This is nice because it combos very easily into your short hop. It's a fairly easy combo to do, and then once the opponent's a bit further away, you can start your zoning again. You can throw out your axe, your cross, any number of good attacks. And then last but not least, you have the up air. 
This can be a great way to force the opponent into certain situations since they now have to deal with your zoning on the way down, and Simon definitely has very good options for that. And then it can also start off combos if your opponent's percentage is a bit higher. Alright everyone, that concludes this guide for the Belmonts. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, then please leave a like down below. It really does help my channel out a lot. And while you're down there, please request which character you want next. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and ring the bell. That way you never miss a future video. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.